Good evening. The school board meeting of Tuesday, December 10th is called to order. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is adjustments to the agenda, and we will have a vote for the Finance Committee under new business. And item number 9B, report from the School Service Delivery Study Committee, will not be tonight. Are there any other adjustments? The next item on the agenda is approval of the November 12th School Board Minutes. <coughs> Are there any corrections? Seeing none, they stand approved. The next item on the agenda is um, comments by high school and middle school reps. Is there high school reps or middle school reps will go first? Go ahead. We had a big turnout on the Mayflower event with WMGX. We had, I think, the biggest turnout um, so far. And we have a dance this Friday for the seventh and eighth graders. And there's going to be a $4 admission because we're raising money, raising money for needy families. And a few student council members will go with Mrs. Sleekus to Toys R Us and we'll get presents for our children and the families and maybe a gift certificate for the parents from a restaurant or a clothes store. And there's going to be a student council convention on January 6th, and student council members will go, and it's an all-day during school project, and that's it. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. Is there a high school rep? <coughs> uh, my name is Allison Lunt. I'm in place of Matt Lunt and Ryan Kane. Um, for drama, our play for the snow show, which will be January 9th through 12th, is well underway and really beginning to take shape. The theater department is now thinking about and accepting suggestions for a one act, and there's a lot of talk from both students and Mr. Mullen about the need for a musical this year. For music this month, the concert band is doing well in preparation for the winter concerts, December 16th, and the symphonic band should turn some heads next week. The chorus is also sounding great. A performance club comprised of talented soloists, duets, and combos are playing a recital this month, and the Music Boosters will be holding a bake sale December 14th. Since winter sports have started, both basketball teams look promising. The Nordic ski team should be very competitive in their first year as a varsity sport, and the hockey team has already done very well in their first few games. The swim team and the indoor track team has, have also started preseason and look forward to their first meets. There was a 50s, 60s, 70s dance last Friday, which was somewhat successful despite unfavorable weather conditions. Last week was AIDS Awareness Week and was commemorated with candles for sale and ribbons and information available. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is communications, and I just wanted to mention to everyone that if they could come to the mic when they speak and identify themselves, that would be helpful. We had some feedback that it was hard to um, hear people and know who they were as they were speaking, and especially if you're watching from home. Um, are there any other communications? Anne? Um, I just wanted to thank Cynthia for all the um, articles that she's sending home with our packets. They're very interesting and enjoyable. Keep them coming. <laughs> Are there any other communications? The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. And the first item is that our new special ed director has been with us about two weeks. We're all very relieved and delighted to have her. I think she feels like she hasn't had a chance to even catch her breath since she's been here. But Claire Labrie is here, and uh, hopefully she'll have a chance to chat with all the board members and members of the constituency as time goes on. Uh, second item is relative to a workshop that Ann Chapman and Scott Poulin attended. I think Ann maybe is going to make a few comments. Just a very few. Um, Scott Poulin and I had the great pleasure of attending a week-long workshop at Harvard the last week 
of uh, October on negotiations. It was at Harvard Law School and it was taught by uh, the people who have put together the Getting to Yes um, series of books <coughs> on negotiating, which, you know, are, if anybody's read them, I think several people here have read them, are very useful. This was an, just an incredible um, course that uh, ran all day, every day, and into the night with lots of homework, so there was no, absolutely no play time <laughs> at all. And, um, you know, we went through a series of uh, exercises and doing one-on-one -on -one negotiations, two-on-two -two videotaped presentations that were critiqued, six-on-four pres presentations, and just very, very in-depth mm -hmm. um, work on picking apart how to do a successful negotiation. I have uh, reams of material um, to share with anybody who'd, who'd like to see it, um, lots of books. And um, I think it might be useful before we start a new round of negotiating um, for Scott and, and I maybe to put on just a little informal presentation both for board members and for members of uh, the negotiating teams for, the, for our various units um, just on the framework here. But it was extremely useful and I want to thank um, the school department and um, the taxpayers of Elizabeth for, for helping me um, do this and I hope it will be useful. Thank you. Hope it will be useful too. <laughs> um, Cynthia, go ahead. The Cape Community Coalition is sponsoring a student survey. It's uh, developed by the Search Institute and it's going to be given to our sixth, seventh, no, seventh, eighth, and ninth graders on January 14th. And all of the parents will receive information on it and will have a chance if they wish to come in and look at the survey. It will be up to the parents as to whether they wish to withdraw their student from that. It takes about 45 minutes and really looks at student assets and community assets to help to make uh, student life more positive and to help to make the community a more cohesive and, and positive place to live. So all the parents in the, of the children in those grades will be receiving information on that. Will be for sixth grade. I'm sorry. I started to say six, six, seven, eight, and nine. Right, four grades. Right, not the fifth. Great. And we have. I had one other piece. We have a retirement. Sue Raftis, who is a 22-year employee of our food services program, will be retiring on January 2nd. Uh, she has been both the high school kitchen manager most recently, and has worked in the program for an extended period of time. And certainly, she has been an integral part of the program here, and will be sensed. Any questions or comments? Just like to say, thank Sue for her 22 years of service. That is a long time. Um, the next item on the agenda is the principal's reports, and we will start with school. Thank you. I'd like to start off with a few congratulatory announcements. First of all, through the National High School Soccer Association, we had both Jeff Haywood and Josh McEachie were elected to All American high school soccer team, which is quite an accomplishment when you think of the number of kids participating nationwide in that sport. So congratulations to, to those two young men. Also, Alex Ortolani, who is a senior and, a, and our SAC chair, has been selected to participate in Arts Week 97 in Miami, Florida on January 7th through the 9th. And this is through the National Foundation for the Advancement in the Arts. And Alex was one of 20 students chosen nationally to attend in the category of writing and poetry. There'll be a hundred, there are um, eight categories with 20 per category, so 160 kids nationwide. I also offered to Alex if he needed supervision that the administration may think about going to Miami on the 7th, um, but uh, in just, it, it looks great and, and we're really excited for Alex. Um, this selection also quali uh, qualifies him for a presidential scholarship in the arts and that will be determined on the results in Miami. So to those uh, three students, congratulations. Also, I'd like to personally thank Kate Garmy and Chris Ellis for their efforts in helping our fifth annual Needy Family Project go very, very well. Uh, the staff at, uh, at the YWCA, the day, the day we delivered the food basket, were tremendous press with the, uh, the, uh, the amount of food and, and quality of the kids that brought that. And uh, we're real, real happy about the contributions by the staff and students. Um, the high school will be presenting its winter concert. Um, on uh, Monday night, next Monday, and that will be the first concert of the year, and that will be our bands, our two uh, uh, bands, and also our chorus will be performing. And then on the following day, we're, we're holding an assembly for our students with the band and concert, uh, the band and uh, chorus playing for them. 
And as mentioned uh, by Ms. Lunt, the uh, winter sports season is underway. And we also had a, a successful dance last weekend. I want to thank the chaperones who attended. It was uh, we tried to do a game type dance, and uh, the weather was not in the, uh, in the best interest of us. But uh, participation was was great. And we had a lot of fun. So thank you. Any questions? A question. Uh, the winter concert is it open to the public? Yes, it is. I'm is, sorry. Is there an admission? No, there will not be an admission. <laughs> you need knowledge. to get tickets in advance. I was told. See, that was my confusion. Okay. I was told it were <laughs> tickets. Okay, probably it could be because of the limited uh, okay. seating, but uh, I, I usually we've had donations, at the, but not uh, not a, a price tag to the, the so ticket. You could call the high school. Call the high school if you're interested, and we'll reserve. We'll hold tickets for people. Okay. Yeah. And uh, a follow up on how the English uh, situation is. It's going very well, along? very well. In fact, I've been in a couple of classes. My just in an observatory situation in. Uh, Things are going very well. So thank you. Other That's questions? Or? Any other questions? Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Uh, the next is Pond Cove. Tom. Good evening, everybody. I just want to mention a few words about the ongoing work we're doing in assessment. I have good news and bad news. We got revised scores for the fourth grade MEA. I don't know if you read about that in the paper, about there being some kind of glitch in the scoring. And all the Pond Cove scores went up. Uh, the reason that Lyle Kramer and I wondered about this last spring was the, uh, we think the Chicago Math is a pretty effective program. And a lot of kids had been awarded uh, distinctive scores. They scored in a distinctive range, I mean, and uh, we still have a 400. That happened to be um, the area that was slighted. So the revised scores have math up, for example, from 365 to 400. And all the other scores went up accordingly. Not quite that high, but they did very well. On the downside, since I've been involved with the e Eagles MC Squared project for over a year, and assessment was kind of the heart of the initiative, I just wanted to mention that there was a K through 8 initiative, and we were going to involve K through 12. Whatever we do will not be funded through NSF. We were, we were turned down. The, um, the George is on the steering committee. We're still going to meet uh, and do what we can do without uh, federal money, and <coughs> we may reapply. So I just wanted to say that publicly and thank all the people who worked on it so hard. It looked like a good grant to me. I think it still is, but it wasn't funded. The um, Pond Cove Assessment Committee has still been doing its internal work. We have put off. Uh, we're a little bit off our schedule because a, a few other issues arose. If you've been following the staff meeting and team leader minutes, you'll know we, we took some time to, uh, I mean, a whole faculty meeting to get feedback from the staff about the roles and responsibilities of the team leaders. Team leaders will be sifting through that feedback uh, Thursday afternoon. I, I really want to thank Pam Vos for facilitating that meeting. Pam is taking a course in leadership and facilitating groups and she volunteered to facilitate that very important faculty meeting and everybody including myself was very impressed with Pam's expertise. Um, the other issue that has come up periodically during the year staff meeting is the uh, an assessment of how we're doing with our new school-wide discipline program. We sent home in the fall um, sheets of information for people to put in their parent student handbook. There were three hole punched and put in there. Um, and we have gone over the results at staff meeting on a fairly regular basis. The, the school wide discipline, if you haven't gotten the uh, information, uh, applies in the hallway, the cafeteria, and the playground. And a series of steps are taken to help kids learn the rules and then remind them when they break the rules. Um, and one of the things we use is something that the committee calls the restitution room. It means that the, the rule breaking has been serious enough for the child to have to take some time during a recess at noontime with adult guidance and support to figure out what happened, how the child could have made a better choice, make a plan to, in some cases, make restitution, apologize, or something like that, and then um, try not to come back to that room again. I think there's been some confusion, according to the phone calls I've gotten lately for parents, about this being punishment. We don't look at it that way. It's just a matter of helping the students be responsible for their behavior. It also has given Nancy St. John and me uh, a very good paper record of the types of rule breaking that's going on at Pond Cove. And I should tell you for information that 
not very many kids go to the restitution room and the offenses are not all that serious. Uh, shoving and pushing and occasionally swearing and things like that. Um, we, but we now have an accurate record of the things that are going on. We hope in January to work with uh, Nancy Markowitz, who is a parent here and also works in South Portland, to talk about conflict resolution in general and expand the mediation program. So I really want to thank um, the people who have stuck with the discipline program, helped us out at faculty meetings, have done a lot of work. Sarah Berman, Sarah Lewis, Susie Safer, and Rachel Clark in particular have done a lot of work. Um, and also, a lot of the burden for this fell on the ed techs who supervised on the playground, and they uh, quickly grasped what they had to do, and they've been very good about following up with the kids and communicating with the teachers and me. So. Uh, Rick didn't mention it, but the high school MBA schools also had significant oh. increases in their totals. Tom, I just wanted to ask, is there any plan to um, submit the um, science grant to any other places that might fund it? I was um, hoping to get the actual written feedback um, because it went to Sue Gendron in Scarborough. I think she's going to send it along. She did say um, that there were some positive comments, and they did say um, resubmit for what that's worth. So I think the committee will have to decide uh, what to do with that. And I, that might be a good suggestion. Maybe take that idea and uh, apply in another direction. I still think it's a strong grant. So, Are there other places to submit it to except for the uh, NSF? Uh, that's the only one I know. Okay. But um, assessment is a hot topic, so there, there might be other places to, to go with it. Great. Just Anne. one more comment that uh, reminded me what you were saying about the um, the mediation program. I actually did just send for some information that the Harvard Negotiation Project has actually put together a whole curriculum for called Program for Young Negotiators, um, which is just like a, you know, a mini version yeah. of their adult negotiating program that looks like it's, it, it might pertain to our district. But anyway, hopefully I'll be getting that information I'd, soon. I'd be happy to pass that on to you. If I'd really like to see it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, it's come to my attention that tardiness is rather a chronic problem at oh, Pond Cove. That what is? Tardiness. Do you have any words of wisdom to the parents watching at home? Um, don't wait for a letter from me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to send, a, uh, sometimes I send the blanket note home about tardiness, and uh, Barbara McLean keep, keeps a, a record of it, and I'll send a more personal letter home to remind people of the importance of being at school on time. And for the parents who are out there, school starts at 8.30. And all the, the grades start with warm-up activities and group work soon after that. So if your child comes in a little late, your child's going to be a little off balance the rest of the day and probably have to deal with glares from me in the hall. And, and what's the official dismissal time? We start um, calling buses at 10 of 3, so dismissal is right around 3. Because I think that's a little confusing. The kids seem to be coming out at about, you know, seven minutes of three. We, we try to get the walkers out, yeah, about that time. So the whole process takes from 10 of three from announcing it to almost 10 after three. Today it took even longer. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And Nancy, sorry. Well, let's see. Um, first of all, just to bring you up to date with a few things to follow on what other people have mentioned, we have our holiday concert is December 12th, which is Thursday night at 7 p.m. It's in the high school gym, and there is no fee. There's no advance tickets. Um, <laughs> welcome everyone to come, and our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade bands will be performing. Obviously, the 5th grade band hasn't formed yet. They just got their instruments about... Um, six weeks ago, so they're not ready for the band adventure, but they will be in the spring. And all of our choruses, our fifth and sixth grade chorus, seventh and eighth grade chorus, and our sign chorus will be performing. So we invite all of you to come and invite the public to come as well, too. Please do not feel that you have to have a performer there to come and enjoy the music. I think it will be a very pleasurable evening. To bring you up to date with a couple of um, things that we're doing in curriculum, 
um, in math. First of all, we'd like to very much thank George Entwistle for his help in introducing our math presentation to the sixth grade parents and other interested community and school members on November 13th. Uh, George came to a meeting with the sixth grade team to plan it and to work on it and to give us advice on the things we were thinking about. He also helped to introduce the evening and set it off in a real collaborative tone as we were all working together. So George, we thank you very much for that time and effort. Um, we thought it was a very good evening. We had lots of good questions um, that parents asked throughout the evening and they will really help inform our instruction as we move forward. We did give the computation test that we mentioned that night to all of the sixth grade students and copies of the test scores went home um, with the sixth graders report cards on December 3rd. Generally speaking, um, the students performed better on the test than we thought and we were pleased with that. We had also given a test to fifth graders earlier um, than the report card report out and that test showed some concerns. We felt there were concerns and we wanted to get a measure of where we were. Um, with the computation. So our concern about computation is something that the certainly the fifth and sixth grade teachers will be bringing to that K-12 math meeting for mathematics on January 2nd and 3rd. Also recently Linda Gatimus who is a teaching principal at the Agunquit Village School visited with our fifth grade team to talk about everyday math. She had used it last year, had some concerns about it, also saw some advantages and that was a very worthwhile time. She came up and met with them during one of their planning periods. We continue our monthly meetings to talk about strengths and weaknesses um, of the math program and we'll continue that throughout the year. In social studies, our eighth graders right now are working in their iSearch projects and they're doing that in a rotation of classes. Therese Roberts' social studies classes went first and I honestly can't remember if Jamie Michaud's class goes, two classes go next or Cheryl Higgins' two classes, uh, but they're going to do that so that by the end of January everyone will have experienced the iSearch. This is a project that um, Joyce Bell brought to your attention during the high school workshop that we had worked with the high school teachers. They do an iSearch project as freshmen. This is an introductory project. Um, the freshman project results in a written uh, report. The eighth grade project results in an oral presentation. Part of the iSearch idea is that all along you instruct on how to do research, but students also write and reflect on what they are learning. This is what I did to find out about this topic. This is how I chose a topic. This is how I made decisions about which reference books to use. So that they're constantly having to document their own learning. And that's one of the powers of the iSearch project. So all eighth graders will experience that. In science recently, representatives from the seventh and eighth grade met to talk about developing manageable extensions for those students who seem to be able to go beyond the curriculum and also different ways to identify who those students would be. We do not offer challenge courses in science. These would be things that would be done within the classroom and within our, the confines of our regular classroom period. So um, people are working on that. Also, in addition to what Tom was saying about the National Science Foundation grant, our friend Steve Conley, who now works in Scarborough but still always looks for every grant he could possibly find, has come across an opportunity for a way to write for a grant for the three school districts, Scarborough, South Portland, and Cape Elizabeth, to apply to put on a science academy this summer. And I know Tom, myself, and Steve Price are going to a meeting in Scarborough um, this coming Friday to talk about that grant. And I think that grant is due the end of December, so um, Steve Conley is heading up the writing of that, but we will be contributing information. In language arts, we're all working on drafts to develop a common syllabus for each grade level. We have working copies of those. Um, teachers are discussing uh, the common books they read. Uh, fifth grade has decided to add a book, and seventh grade is discussing to replace Lord of the Flies. Eighth grade is discussing to replace Missing May. Those things will be represented in our budget request for textbooks. Um, also in language arts, we are talking about um, working with the fourth graders. They use a book called Writer's Express, which is a reference book uh, for all aspects of the basic skills in English. And we would like to use that book. It's a paperback book that students can purchase. And we would like to use that book maybe in grades four, five, and six. There's an extension of that, the Writer's Source 2000, that we would like to look at for grades 7 and 8. And we're still having those conversations. Those are just works in progress to talk about. Our foreign language teachers continue to meet to work on um, looking at skills for students that are moving faster than the curriculum, but also to develop activities for the students who join us, mostly from other schools who come in and move into Cape Elizabeth, whether it be in 
whatever grade um, and join a foreign language study. Obviously, if they join the foreign language study in grade six, students have had two years of, and there's not another option of taking a beginning language um, to stay with that. So they continually work on ways to catch those students up and to make them feel successful in the classroom as well. We are really on a whole other topic. We're um, really enjoying our new bleachers in the gym. And if you haven't had a chance to stop by and see them, or even perhaps to sit in them, um, please feel free to come to one of our basketball games. Uh, it's really a delight to be able to sit in those instead of the wonderful folding chairs. Wonderful though they, they may be, the bleachers are indeed a nice improvement. They look very nice. We've had lessons on how to move them out. I even know how to do that, but I think the best solution is to always call a custodian because I've decided they know how to do it even better than I do. So um, they will certainly help us with that, but we are enjoying them. Also, just an update on the girls' basketball season. It's going well. We've, had, we've talked with the girls several times just in general about how things are going. We've had no discipline problems. We did receive a letter from um, the people at, in SAD, get this right, SAD 55, which is when we play um, it's in Hiram, and it's that district. And um, Keith Weatherby and I, I called the principal, and Keith was going to talk with the athletic director directly. Um, it was a letter that was very derogatory about the behavior of our students, but didn't seem to identify a specific um, action. Uh, the letter was not very, was written in a very unpleasant manner. Uh, we did beat the team 57 to 4. Uh, we did seem to make a mistake in that we used a full court press when we did not need to the entire game, and that's absolutely correct. We need to know about that. But there were other accusations about sportsmanship, but when I spoke to the principal, she knew of no specific events or knew nothing to add to that information. So we are looking at that. Um, the person was also most upset that we got there after 4 o'clock. And I, it did explain to the principal that we do not dismiss early for athletic events. And the earliest we really can pull out of our yard is 2.40 or 2.45. And we got there as soon as we could. Um, and, but he was quite irate at our coach when we arrived late, which really isn't, it's just a fact. We are going to arrive late. And um, so we are working with that. But as far as we know, no one did anything specifically, but we are still investigating that. And we did have some students who attended yesterday and today with Anine Burgess and Julie Salikas, a program on the civil, from the Civil Rights Commission, dealing with the same aspects of mediation. We do have some peer mediators in the middle school, but they're hesitant to get involved. And we don't know if that's because of the middle school age or what? We know other mid middle schools where the peer, medi peer mediation works well, but our students have, oh, well, don't tell anyone, although they're willing in small groups to talk about it. So we thought this particular program, which gets at some of the same aspects of respecting one and all and working out issues, um, might be something that appealed to them more. And we did um, go to some informational meetings and we took some students. I have not had a chance to talk with Anine and Julie or the students to see how the day went, um, but I know they did attend. So we will have an update on that at some time. And our final invitation is that we do have a dance on Friday night. And um, Mr. Jewett asked me to be sure that all the parents out there knew that no matter what your son or daughter says, that parents are welcome at our middle school dances. We encourage you to come. We enjoy having parents there to chaperone. And so far, no child has expired because their parents attended a middle school dance. Um, and we have many ways to help you do that and to watch without being um, in their space too much. And we encourage parents to come and to enjoy the evening with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Any questions? Charlie. Just, Charlie, a sorry. just a comment on the dance, and it has nothing to do with the middle school, it has to do with the high school. Students don't expire either with their parents there, <laughs> having chaperoned the dance last Friday. <laughs> Thank you. The next item on the agenda is committee reports and finance committee. Charlie? Uh, the finance committee met at uh, 6.30 in the chamber's conference room preceding this meeting. Uh, we reviewed the appropriations report, uh, signed the warrants, uh, we had our first school lunch income statement from the state, which covered September, and we are in relatively good shape. Um, we did a, had a discussion and looked at some athletic director salary comparisons from other districts uh, to kind of give some feedback to that athletic committee that will be meeting in a week or so. Is it a week? Um, Dr. Malls uh, talked about a PAS increase cost. She attended the uh, PAS meeting in November. Um, and there is a new program which will be presented 
or developed, hopefully developed if approved by the sending schools. Um, video production. It's video production and it's an increased cost of about 89,000 which will impact every district for two years. Um, the upslide is that our enrollment of students has also increased. Um, this year I believe we have about 18 and last year we had about 12. So our enrollment and participation in PAS is increasing every year. Um, and then there will be a vote later on on a photocopier lease purchase agreement. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? The next is the Technology Committee. I'm not sure who's reporting. Charlie? That's me if I find my notes. Okay. Uh, the Technology Committee met on um, uh, November 19th. Um, uh, generally a discussion of where we are as far as networking. Um, a lot of work has been done by SMTC students in helping us to um, finalize some of our networking. Um, there was extended discussion about um, personnel and the, the needs for buildings for, for next year as far as re relating to the budget. And the next meeting, which will be December 17th, at 3.15 in the high school library, um, Jay will be bringing back a, I think, a proposed budget. And he was also looking at other alternatives for staffing and meeting staffing needs. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions? Uh, the next uh, committee is the Athletic Study Committee, and they met at the end of November with a public workshop on the work that was done by that committee. It was uh, generally accepted by the board, um, the bulk of the work, and the next time that a piece of that work will be done will be on Monday, December 16th at 4 p.m. It would be the first meeting of the Athletic Steering Committee. And that group will be looking at any possible options for new sports being added, what funding levels. They would be looking at the overall athletic budget being presented to the board and um, just generally working out the athletic um, picture. And anybody is invited to, to attend. I don't know where it is. High school, high, the high school uh, conference, room. conference room. High school conference room at 4 p.m. on Monday the 16th. And please, anyone who's interested, please feel free to come. Um, and as a whole group, that athletic committee would probably plan to meet maybe one more time to go over how that steering committee process went. But otherwise, their work is pretty much wrapped up. Do you want to list who's on that committee? The athletics just titles. The athletic steering committee is officially made up of both uh, middle school and high school building principals, the athletic director, director of community services, and one board rep. Those would be the official members, but certainly members of the booster, other interested parents, other board members, anyone else is invited to come and give input. There is one official non-voting booster oh. rep. Okay. Non-voting official booster rep. And that is, that's the president of the, of the boosters, who is uh, okay. Charlie Haskell, so he'll be attending that meeting. Great. Well, and anybody else, please attend. Um, and that's it for the Athletic Study Committee. The next committee is the Policy Committee. Gail? Uh, we had our monthly meeting on November 14th at 7.45 in the morning and uh, are presenting three policies this evening for second reading, the school board ethics, the reading policy, and advertising in the school. Um, th there was little discussion at the policy uh, regarding these um, proposals. The athletics rules and regulations have been approved. They were guidelines, so they are now official and have been placed in policy manuals, I hope. I'm also pre um, offering three policies this evening for first readings, which I will um, present under new business. And our next meeting will be, wait a minute, this Thursday, December 12th at 7.45 a.m. in the 
conference uh, chambers. We're going to be doing background checks for future employees, copyright laws, and interrupted studies. Thank you, Gail. The next is the Pool Study Committee. Yes. Gail again. Well, we met on uh, December 2nd. The, a representative from the Harriman Associates came with the first draft of um, the pool revision. And at that particular meeting, they uh, discussed the uh, parts of the pool that are, need immediate attention, the uh, parts of the project that would have to be updated for codes, and that we also discussed it as, as a group, the um, improvements that we would like to see um, to make the pool what we would like it to become. It is a 25-year-old pool, 30-year-old pool. Um, and we have been assured that it has worn very well and that there were no real surprises, but that it has um, ran its life. And we have some serious problems that are going to have to be uh, addressed. Harriman will be presenting um, formally and at a workshop on January 7th, a combined workshop with the school board and town council. Public is um, invited to attend. It will be one um, agenda item out of uh, two or three that will be discussed at that meeting. Harriman at that time will be presenting the official draft, the final draft that we will be um, offering up to the town and discussing the different options. The school board will receive that draft uh, the week of December 30th so that you will have time to look at the um, proposals. And at that time, you will see we've asked them to list out the cost, estimated cost for each item of repair, the absolute musts, the code uh, revisions, and the this would be terrific ideas. So, <clears throat> thank you, Gail. Stay tuned. <laughs> Um, the next committee is the superintendent search committee. Anne? Um, well, we're finally gearing up on this superintendent search. I know everybody's really excited about this. Um, I, the ads are currently being placed, right, Cynthia? Right. And we're about to firm up just the slight revisions to uh, the application uh, that we want the applicants to fill out. Um, those will be available early in January. Um, and shortly, um, Cynthia will be soliciting um, teacher representatives for the interview committee. And um, very shortly, we will also be writing some kind of article with a time timeline for the Cape Courier and soliciting um, community uh, representatives for the interviewing committee. So we're making some progress. And I will get the board an official timeline so that you have, have it clearly in mind. Thank you, Ann. And the next committee is the Research Strand Committee. Yeah. Since our last board meeting, there have been two meetings of the Research Strand, November 15th and this afternoon, December 10th. Um, at both of those committees, uh, uh, the librarians presented the research uh, activities that are going on in the different schools uh, right now. And Nancy uh, Hutton spoke about the iSearch uh, projects that are going on in the eighth grade. Sally Martin was very interested in that and I guess had helped set that uh, eighth grade program up because it dovetails with the iSearch project as Nancy had uh, stated with the ninth grade. And it is now um, a continuum of research projects from eighth grade through the twelfth grade year with major projects happening um, already. And it is the hope that by the end of this year we will have a K-12 research curriculum in place. Gail, is that committee looking at trying to stagger um, the research papers in various topics so we don't have that overload problem we talked about in the junior year where kids were doing more than one major paper at a time? Right. They're taking kindergarten is ta they, they have now six areas of, or, or six steps to, I think it's six steps, to approach a research project. And they're developing the, the use of these six steps in the elementary school with children learning how to ask a question right. and learning how to find the information. Um, then, yes, all the different disciplines will do the different steps the same way, and kids will be doing a research project in social studies and hopefully not at the same time in English. Right. And in the high school, um, all the disciplines are using the library and now starting research. 
the discussion was that research shouldn't be such a tremendous deal that if children do have two topics assigned in two different disciplines, they should be able to manage. And in fact, um, that's happened right now in the junior year. My, my son had an American history project due the same time as his junior research paper. Um, and he seems to have survived, so. Oh, I just remember that was brought up as a reason why yeah. the English department yeah. was having such a bad time. So well, I agree with you. It should be totally preventable by being prepared. Well, the other issue was that there would be papers in a gradual mm -hmm. length as you go through the system. And that is being put, that, they're working on that. Yeah. That's in the curriculum. So that a 10-page paper by junior year would be nothing because you've done in, you know, five to eight-page paper, yeah. you know, all the way yeah. through or whatever. And, and I think that was shown that that is happening with the I search starting in eighth grade now and, and <clears throat> what is being required in high school um, and once it get all formal it will become formalized I, just one other um, comment that was made at the research these research committee meetings are very exciting um, the people there have a lot of energy and the librarians are very invested in um, having the, the library be a hub of each different school building um, and lot a lot of things are happening in our district right now that was discussed today and one of the ideas um, that came out from that was that perhaps people would would enjoy knowing that and we would like to somehow um, write an article in the courier or do something where we can talk about all the different research projects that are happening across the disciplines k-12 right now just on on that same note I think it would probably be a good idea if uh if the kids who are starting to do those things, for instance, I have an eighth grader and I just surmised from what Nancy said that he was doing that eye search paper. I had no idea and it would be nice to have communication about, you know, that this is kind of a new way of doing things. Yeah. Um, but I, I had no idea it was uh, in that kind of framework. <laughs> I'm sure you would have been happy to come present it here tonight, but. <laughs> but it, just that communication to parents about you know, we are making strides in, in this area, and so parents, you know, that it is real tangible progress that, that they can see. That's great. Thank you, Gail. And Gail, again, reading committee. I, I have a concern, yes, but I think I'll raise it with the principal. It had, it was something that Gail alluded to about a, a social studies and a his, the junior social studies and history both being, um, having, concluding at the same time. I have some concerns about why did we expand the English? Why did we why did we create two quarters of expanded English if if the research project is due before Christmas? Thank you. So it just it just piqued my when you said that. Reading committee, Gail. Okay. Uh, the reading committee met last Wednesday morning, December 4th. It was a full committee and new members were um, a part of that this time. It came about as a result of the board passing the reading policy. And the uh, intent of the meeting on Wednesday, uh, well the purpose, one of the purposes was to discuss how the staff would all become familiar with the new board reading policy. And it was decided that a part of a half hour of the curriculum workshops on the staff development days on January 2nd and 3rd would be spent discussing um, the reading policy. Not do we like it or don't we like it, because it, it is the reading policy. And that would be the intent of this half hour, that we now have a reading policy, that all disciplines and um, teachers will be working with it and we have come up with five or six questions that will uh, start a discussion on how we are actually teaching reading now and so that people don't feel we're putting more on the <coughs> plate but just um, beginning the discussion on what we are doing, what strategies do you use, how do you teach um, an instructional text as opposed to a fiction and um, just to start the discussion that way. Is that correct, Nancy? Next meeting, we will begin working with um, consolidating the strategies and the standards that the different schools have been working on all along. And actually, each school presented um, a, a formalized list of standards that they had for their particular grade levels, K-4 or 
And we'll be working on that, and hopefully by the end of the school year, we will have a standards K-12 that will be available to all um, faculty. And when is the next reading committee meeting? That, I'm not sure. February 5th. February 5th. And that one, Gail, actually, we're going to talk about feedback from the January right. workshops. It's the one following that we'll be getting back to the standards. Okay, so February 5th will be a follow-up to the staff development day discussions, and the March... April meeting, which has not been set yet, will continue on with the standards. And is that at 7.30? Uh, no, I believe it was an afternoon February meeting. February 5th is noon, I think, I is think it? I think it's 12 to 2. Okay. Oh. Great. Thank you. One, one more question on that. Are, are these standards that we're developing being correlated in any yes. way to the learning? Yes, they are being correlated. with. And the next committee is the Arts Committee. Keith? Uh, the Arts Committee met last Monday, December 2nd, uh, primary uh, goal of the meeting was to get organized for the upcoming uh, teacher workshop days. Uh, they are going to be facilitated by Mary Hart and Rebecca Wing. Um, we spent a little time with Jay Trevorrow and talking about uh, what would be a good use of the hour and a half technology training time. and. Uh, and uh, we seem to agree that they wanted to look at some various software programs relating to the arts and uh, what internet materials are available uh, for the arts uh, people. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, the rest of the time of the teacher workshop days uh, will be devoted to the various arts departments, uh, basically getting a, a, a compilation of curriculum as to uh, what we're doing now and getting that in writing. Right now there's not a comprehensive document that talks about our arts program and uh, hopefully that's going to be the goal of this two-day workshop to get that in writing so that we can then take a look at where we need improvement. Thank you, Keith. Any questions? The next committee is the Staff Development Committee and we met Monday, December 2nd at 2.30 and we finalized plans for the two January workshop days and each of the uh, subject area groups reported out what they thought their topics would be and teachers from each building are divided among those groups and things seem to be well on the way. And the last group is the PAS. I don't know, Cynthia? Well, Charlie basically uh, gave the context of the the last meeting, which is on the budget. And I guess the only other thing I want to say is that I continue to be impressed with the quality and variety of programs at PADS. And we really are striving to be sure that all of our students know what the possibilities are there, and we're trying to match the students with the program. So that's, we expect the numbers of participants to go up as time goes on. Great. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is unfinished business. The first item is policies, second reading. All right. <laughs> the first policy that I, uh, well, I'll put all three before you. Um, advertising in the schools, K, H, B. Do you want me to read these? Not the whole policy, okay. no. Cape Elizabeth policy on reading instruction, I, H, A, A, and the school board code of ethics, B, B, F. Are there any comments on them? Before we look for a motion, is there a motion? I move we accept these policies. Is there a second? I second it. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Right. Uh, the next item is the update on the parent survey. I guess I'll do that. Um, George and I met with um, the three principals and a teacher rep on Wednesday, November 27th. 27th. Thank you. Early in the morning. And we went over a draft of sort of a new form of a policy that was worked on by the high school staff. And we used that as our model. And marked it up a bit and talked about it and we talked about what should be in a cover letter and those kind of things. Um, Rick then got out another draft to us and I also worked on the cover letter with some input from George and I retyped 
the high school draft and it looks like the high school one retyped it. So we're sort of getting closer. Um, we're not quite there yet, but we're working on it. And I need any input from board members and I think the principals are looking from it from their teachers. And as I put in my memo that I thought we needed to then set another meeting time once we had all of that input. Um, I think we're getting there. And if there are any other comments or? We have, I have not sent it out to the teachers again. We, we redid the one, two, to try to, we're still trying to come up with one K through 12. And we may not be able to do that. And we may not be able to do that. So Great. But our teachers have not had a chance to see the new draft yet. The teacher rep was out last week, and I think she will make that available. Great. Well, we can set a time to meet then, uh, maybe after this meeting, and go from there. Any other questions? Beth, I think, it's, I think it's important just to note that it seems as though through the work that has been done that we've really moved um, more to a question of format rather than content, which is, uh, I think, a big step forward. Yeah. No, that's definitely the piece we're working on is the content and format. The I mean, format, format not content. Mm -hmm. And oh, I just want to thank you all for continuing to work, work on this. And I think you're right. It is a format issue now. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I have gotten a lot of calls from parents saying, thank you for doing this. It's, it's time. Great. And so any board members, Ann gave me some comments before this meeting. If you could mark your things up and get them to George Roy, that would be great. The next item on the agenda is new business. And we have policies for first reading. Three policies this evening. Um, the first one is animals in the school. And we have never had a policy on animals in the school, whether you could have animals or not have animals in the school, and it was brought to our attention that we needed it. So we have worked on um, creating this, and it's actually taken from uh, the MSMA. It is saying that permission is to be obtained from the principal before animals are to be brought into the classroom by anyone. Um, and animals are not allowed to be on the school buses. Animals must be adequately housed and cared for in screen cages. And if animals are to be kept in the classroom on days when classes are not in session, there must be arrangements made. And this is file ING. Is there feedback <laughs> for Gail? All right. Uh, the um, next one, homeschooling participation in school programs, IHBGA. We have um, we are now required by January to have a policy in place. Uh, this was the proposed policy by MSMA, and uh, Cynthia or Dr. Moles, excuse me, and I went over this and we worked on it in this policy committee. There was very little that um, that we had any reason to change, so we are proposing um, to accept the one that was given to us by MSMA. It's, it's fairly lengthy. It's five pages. Um, and if you just read in the Portland Press Herald this week, I think they had an article that was talking about um, this very policy and that the state is requiring that we take action on this. Any other comments for Gail? last policy uh, is on electronic communication system access in the Cape Elizabeth schools. This is, has been written by our new technology coordinator. Um, we are um, required to have something in place as we are networking and our children will be using the internet and using um, the computers for research papers and, and um, other experiences. There will be a cover letter, which is your administrative guideline on IJNDB-R1 uh, that explains the need for a policy um, for our computer use. And then there will be a sign-off sheet that you have read it, or parents have read it, that teachers have read it, that um, students have read it on what the responsibilities, um, personal responsibilities are on using the, our computers and using our network and our internet. Um, Dr. Mose, do you have anything more to add on this, since this is all new? No, I think that's fair. I just had a comment, Gail. I know we talked at length about the sponsoring teacher piece, and we took it out of the permission slip form. 
although it appears under sections three and four. And I guess I'd like to look at that again at the policy committee meeting about what that sponsoring teacher is. I thought we thought that every student should get training and then they would be able to use the right. internet, but that you wouldn't have to have every teacher sign off on every child as they went. As long as they'd all gotten the training, then they were free to. Right, and there will be another sign off sheet for the faculty members, but yeah. it wasn't in this packet as teachers take the training and feel that they uh, fully understand. Ann? I guess the way I read that was more that if a teacher is going to allow a student to go do that, they're aware that they're doing it. We don't just have kids going in at lunchtime on their own doing things that there's, they've actually gotten permission from a teacher. That, that's how I was reading that somewhat differently than the way it was worded before, but maybe that could be clear. And I do think we need to have an adult give the okay every time a kid wants to do this or yep so <clears throat> but, but the actual sign off was going to happen just once as the teacher got trained they would sign off and they would then be sort of uh, certified in in uh, access to the internet is that, is that yeah let's just we'll at the yes. policy meeting we can just look at that sponsoring teacher piece a little more and yeah. clarify it and that would I think clear up but the that. student sign off and parents would be a yearly go off with the first day of school packet because parents um, and, and students need to be reminded that this is a responsibility and um, it's a law that we have to be. Any other comments, questions, Charlie? Under definition, if this is a Cape Elizabeth school policy, why is the town alluded to? Because we networked with the town, I think. But you're talking about users, and, you're, and, you're, and this is a policy for schools. You're talking about town users. I think you need to make it clear that it's the school computers. Yes. Because I, I know we were talking at that committee about eventually we're going to have people from town coming in and, and using these, and we have a right to have them follow our rules, mm. but that, that could be clear that we're talking about school property. It could be um, viewed that we're setting town policy here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Just, a, just a, um, a positive comment. I think that this was a difficult thing to pull together. I think it was done very well, particularly the communication. Uh, this opens up a whole new world to the students, and, um, and I think the communication that was put together, the cover letter, um, uh, it, it was just uh, developed very, very well. Yeah. So uh, I think um, that Jay, the uh, technology coordinator, uh, did a very good job on this. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Any other feedback for Gail? No. Just one last comment. Oh. <laughs> um, I appreciate, um, given my schedule, having the opportunity to attend the policy meetings, and I noticed that I have been able to do that now that they're at uh, 7.30 or 7.45 in the morning. So I do appreciate that effort. Okay. Uh, the next item is consideration of the superintendent's nominations for athletic fee positions. We have three winter coaching positions for 7th and 8th grade girls basketball B team, Wayne Bridgem, and that's a 120-hour position. For ice hockey assistant coach, Keith Landrigan, that's a 150-hour position. And assistant indoor track, Doug Worthley, that's a 75-hour position, and that's a part-time position. Are there any questions? Is there a motion? I make the Sorry. motion that we accept the nominations as presented. Is there a second? Second, though. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And there's, I just wanted to announce the upcoming meetings. We have, uh, oh, sorry. We oh, the vote. Other. Sorry, I forgot the vote. <laughs> the Finance Committee vote. Charlie. Uh, this is a, a vote that has to be, I move that under and pursuant to the provisions of Title 20A MRSA Sections 1001 and 1055, the superintendent of schools be and hereby is authorized to ex execute and deliver a tax exempt lease purchase agreement with People's Heritage Leasing Corporation in the name and on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth by and through its school committee 
for photocopy equipment with an aggregate purchase price of $77,486 at all. Is there a second? Gail. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And I just wanted to announce some upcoming meetings. The next school board meeting will be Tuesday, January 14th, 6.30 finance, followed by 7.30 regular meeting. We will also have a joint workshop with the town council on Tuesday, January 7th at 7 p.m. I'm not sure where. And we will also have a workshop in January on Tuesday, January 28th on the middle school program. And there are a million other committee meetings, but I think I'll leave it at that. Are there any other announcements? We have a school board meeting to talk about the superintendent search. Oh, sorry. At 6.30 on January 13th. 6.30 January 13th. So in January every week, almost, the school board is meeting. Um, the meeting. Oh, I need a... Do I have a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. So seconded. All those in favor? 7-0. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs>